we'll have the kids, you know, we crawl in and we all just like lay down in the grass and the cows like slowly get curious and come up and the kids are just like wowed by it. And they've been building a farm stand all winter in our okay. wood shop. And so, yeah, they're gonna pick it and then sell, sell it. it during the week. All of our shipping gets put together on Saturdays when the kids are here and they like sign thank uh -huh. you letters, thanks for buying our Aww. beef. So then when the customers get it, it's really from the kids, like they've helped to grow everything. Being a nonprofit mm -hmm. where things are wearing out and you need to get new things. How does that work? How do you manage that? So I'm Olivia, you are Emily, yes. and this is Dreamer Ranch. Yes. You, what is your position here at Dreamer Ranch? So I'm co-founder and program director. Okay, what does that mean? So Stephanie Foster is the executive director and she founded Dreamers Ranch as a program of this organization called Youth Storm that she and her husband started, I don't know, 20 something years ago. Okay. It was a mentoring organization for youth. We partnered with different ministries, churches, we're a faith-based program and organizations in Massachusetts and they were mentoring them and then um, Steph had this just idea to utilize this property that they had acquired to mentor and work with with Urban Youth and so Dreamers Ranch was born. And so I started working with her in 2017 and I work on building programs and connecting the people to the land and so we've been doing that together for, yeah, what is that, seven, eight years now. Is it just any and all Urban Youth or is there, is it like? we? Well, we have yeah. different partners that okay. we work with and so we, we're um, now working on building some relationships in Manchester, New Hampshire as okay. well. Um, and then we also have a thriving homeschool community that we work mm. with. Um, a lot of, we partner with the Crossing Life Church, which owns this property. And um, there's a hundred acres here. Wow. Um, which is very cool, because it's a suburban area. Yeah. So, and this farm has a lot of history. And the church purchased the um, property in about 2012, I think. And then we started in 2017. We're able to kind of bring new life to the property, which is super cool. But um, being here, we wanted to serve the community and make this like a really community-centered hub. And Stephanie's vision for community and um, partnering with the church and just welcoming everyone in has really come to life through the farm. You know, yeah. people love farm, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm so curious. What, what made you guys decide that there needed to be a farm in part of your your things like yeah. I feel like there's so many other things that people do in the suburbs in the city areas to get youth involved with things but it's it's not farming <laughs> yeah well she tells the story really well um, she tells part of it on our video that's on our website but I think she would say it was like a combination of things an idea from the Lord the fact that this was a working farm before the church even bought the property so that it's like mulling around in her mind some people that she was working with when we were trying to just do a camp out here had suggested they were helping us clear some of the property for just to camp for the urban youth and they're like you should have cows out here uh, <laughs> and so that kind of got her thinking yeah. and then we were thinking and praying and we're like yeah <laughs> like, yeah. it would be great for the guys. You're like, like yeah, cows. cows. Yes. <laughs> and we didn't know what we were doing, and we were like, let's get cows. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so you've got cows. I see them yep, over there, but the cows. what's right here? We've got so, some raised beds, and yep. then you also have a greenhouse. Yeah. So, so take you tell to, me a little bit about what, take what's going the, on. Yeah. In a couple weeks, we'll have our big work day where we prep all of this area, and it'll look um, even more beautiful <laughs> and the community of Wyndham like t people from the town can sign up to have a box and so they will okay. take care of it all summer so yeah in a couple weeks we open that we have a couple work days coming up which is great and yeah youth will come in and help organize and clean and prep and then on the right here is our greenhouse that we worked with the USDA to get an awesome grant for wow. and then we had a high school come in for a week and they helped us build it we actually I guess it's called planing <laughs> our own boards like from trees that we oh had like down. you milled your own lumber yes thank you wow <laughs> so, it looks beautiful yeah, so this is like a pride and joy we have some awesome volunteers that manage it with me and they're master gardeners and their neighbors okay. so they will like do the gardening and then I can bring the students so that's like the the best way that I work is I work with kids and get them plugged in with the masters. Yeah. So you're like the liaison for the kids to get them, like you said, plugged in to mm -hmm. the masters. Yeah. What do you do with all this produce? So this year is the first time that we um, decided that we were going to really do a master plan so that we could um, grow veg and sell it. And so okay. um, on the weekends, we have workshops for the kids to join us with. I don't know if you're too warm. The fan goes on okay. at 85 degrees. So it's not quite 85 yet then. 
could be. It feels like it. <laughs> yeah, it feels like 105. Yeah, so we decided to grow tomatoes. So we have a variety of larger tomatoes on one side and cherry tomatoes on the other. And then we like to plant, like, we think about different foods that we, the kids like to make, so spaghetti sauce. So we have, like, the oh, basil yeah. and other herbs for that. And then we have some, um, a lot of cucumbers along the sides that we're going to pickle and stuff. So during this week, uh, during the school year on the weekends, students will come out second and fourth weekends of the month, really just Saturdays, and then they'll like just participate in all the farm things. And we do we have an entrepreneurial program, so they they do classes with us, and it's experiential. Learn how to be entrepreneurs using yeah. the resources from the ranch, and they prep everything. And then you know when it's grow and go season, they're out here and they're just having a great time. So they've seen the progression of the greenhouse the whole year. That's awesome. Um, and then, what age are these kids? Eight to 14. Oh, wow. And then when they're older than that, if they want to, you know, intern or volunteer, okay. and then they can work up to like potentially some have become staff, some have try and keep them all involved. Yeah, know? that's awesome. Yeah, it's super great. But yeah, they're going to pick this summer. They'll be here during the week. And then they've been building a um, farm stand all winter in our okay. wood shop. And so, yeah, they're going to pick it and then sell, sell it. it during the week. Yeah. That's so, really cool. Yeah, this was just such a beautiful collaboration. Just this whole space I love because it just brings so many people together and the kids yeah. love it. They can be here in the winter. They're mm -hmm. planting the seedlings. Um, but this was a newer thing for us. It's only four years old, I think. But even when we had all of our interns work together and a, a partner farmer to put the top on, it was pretty magical. Awesome. <laughs> all the poly on the That's top. That's awesome. So what about you? You're the li liaison here, but... Do you have a background in agriculture at all? So I have a background in youth work. Okay. Um, my bachelor's is in youth work. My master's is in outdoor adventure and leadership, I'm working with youth. Hey, there's uh, the fan. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is hot. So I just have always had a heart for youth to help them find their place and yeah. be inspired and and for me to know God. And yeah. we think this is a really great place for them to meet, meet awesome people, meet you know, learn about their creator and really learn to value the land and community and um, impact it positively. You're, you're the, li the liaison, like you said, but do you do much of like the farm chores? Oh yeah, we all, okay. all the staff participate in the farm chores. I'm happy to jump through if you want to. <laughs> I, I was like, oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> I should definitely. <laughs> you're good. Not everybody wants to just skip through the hot lines. Yeah, no, I get it. So Been just watch shocked your to... staff for the cow patties. Yeah, um, I mean, everybody does the chores. Everyone does chores. And like when Stephanie and I started, we did, we were like really in it together every day. And you know, we were just exhausted through ourselves in. Yeah. Also really empowered and like loving life. And just, we did everything. It was, right. we joke that it was just a season where we had all the energy in the world. I don't know how we did what we did. <laughs> I'm like, I can barely lift a bucket now. No. <laughs> and we were like hauling cattle. I mean, we still, uh -huh. we still do all that, but as time has evolved, you know, we've more people are involved and she does a lot more of the projects and project management around the farms now, but along with executive director responsibilities. And I do a lot more of the business and working with people but as well as different farm management. So it's evolved um, yeah. as we've grown and it will continue. The more partners we have in different farms and people, it just... What do you mean by partner? Um, we partner with a few other farms. A few years ago, we started partnering with Normanton Farms and he was a, a regenerative farmer from okay. South Africa. Oh, wow. And so he was mentoring us in regenerative farming and okay. um, that's how we were, you know, we were organic and everything, but they were like, oh, this concept is so awesome and yeah. like really matches our mission statement. We talk about regenerating soil and regenerating lives and it's yeah. very cool. So um, he had a lot of grass at one point and no cows. And so we were able to collaborate because we were like lower on grasses as we were increasing okay. our brooding herd our brood herd that's what I mean by partner farms and we've okay. had different friends along the way that were like yeah my grandparents had uh, cattle but now they don't so can you run the cows through to keep the land regenerating instead yeah. of like overgrown so that's yeah. super helpful you've got farming partners so that you can like trade animals or land with mm -hmm. your job description has evolved over the years so if you're if you're not doing chores, who is doing chores? Like, do the kids come and do chores, or, or are they just workshops on Saturdays? On a general, like, school year, it'll be Stephanie or I, or I will, like, um, be a manager of the day. You know, we okay. split up the week. 
So we're here at 7.30 or earlier. And then we have a team of volunteers. A lot of families like to come out in the morning, so they just mm. commit to a morning, we train them, and they help us. Yeah, or we'll have um, interns come out on certain mornings. And so it looks a little different every morning, but you know, okay. there are people that come in, maybe they're from the community, maybe they're kids that parents drop them off, or families from the church, and they sign up, we train them, and they farm with us and for the basic chores. And then yeah. we do the projects, and whether it's our staff, um, or us or whoever will work the farm through the day. And then uh, all of our business is centered around the kids being able to be a part of it. So like all of our orders and sales, our shop is open on uh, Saturdays and Sundays so the kids can be a part. Um, all of our shipping gets put together on Saturdays when the kids are here and they like sign thank you letters, thanks for buying our Aww. beef. So then when the customers get it, it's really from the kids. Like they've helped to grow everything, they've yeah. signed everything, they've packaged their, their boxes. So. It's pretty cool. That's so. That's a twofold uh, question for me. Then from question from me. So you sell meat products too. So mm -hmm. you've got your vegetables. You've got cattle. Do you have any other livestock? We like have do you sheep. Do, you have sheep. And okay. Then we do pigs seasonally. Just yeah. Okay. So they're arriving soon. Okay. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. And then we have 600 laying hens. And so the egg business really, really helps sustain us. And the, the, mm -hmm. the egg business is awesome. It's, we started that with the cattle. That one it allows a lot of people to be involved. So like my mom and Stephanie's mom like uh, run that. They like, we cool. all collect for them. They also collect, but like it's a collaborative to actually collect the eggs, but we call them the egg babes. <laughs> <laughs> and they have like their sweet Mercedes of an egg washing machine. Aww. And so they show up in the mornings and they just wash for a couple hours. And it's so great because like if I need to talk to mom, I know where to find her. Yeah. And like a lot of people know that. So they just pop in and it's like the grandmas are there and you can hang yeah. out with them and help them. And, and they really are huge in helping to support all the work that we're doing by, yeah. by they volunteer their time to like take care of this and they love it and they're just like such a blessing. So it's a very wow. cool like intergenerational thing. It's, it's very like organic and family and it's just grown so much so it can involve a lot more people. You sell your products at a, an actual farm store. Is that here or do you have that offsite somewhere? And, so, I, and I assume too, speaking of offsite, if you've got your lane hens, sheep and you'll have pigs, are they all on this hundred acres mm -hmm. or they are mm -hmm. okay yeah the sheep are hiding over there oh i didn't it's, even see all of that <laughs> yeah it's very small uh, flo uh flock right now so on this side is like our our pasture so every everyone's here to rotate now yeah so we're rotational grazing and okay. then on the other side we have a barn oh, um, oh like where the red silo is yeah even okay. even beyond that and that's where all the like the whenever the sheep are about to birth we you just keep them there for okay. Um, just protection and stuff yeah. to keep an eye on them and our laying hens rotate through here too they're out back that way we okay. can take a peek sure our store is online and then mainly we do open for like an hour on Sundays for a really like targeted demographic of the church community and so a lot of the kids now go to the church so it's it works really well okay. so there's that and then the summertime when they're finished building their farm stand it'll be out there and they're gonna make a little space for the goats to be like a little destination. And it'll be open for a few hours a week that they can run and just connect with the community during the summer, kind of try it out. Yeah. But otherwise our, our big selling point is the store and, and anyone can purchase the meat, we can ship it. I mean, we try to keep within New, New England so that people right. are sourcing locally. We're all about that, but my cousins in Alaska want meat, so <laughs> like, I mean, if you really want it, we can make it happen, but sure, there's a cow down the road you can buy. but thank you. <laughs> right. So, yeah, if that answers your question. Yeah, no, it does. It does. That's our newest little, she's hiding. To, to the, the right? Um, on the left. Oh, of the calf. Yeah, our, there's our, a newborn our, calf. Our first of the season, Aww. and then there's six more pregnant. So you've got a mixture of Herefords, a Highland, mm -hmm. a Belty, and what, an Angus Cross over there? Yeah, Angus okay. Hereford. What, why do you have such a variety? Of, and that's okay, <laughs> I'm just curious if no, there's something like specific great. here that you're looking for. We joke, when we started, we just were like, anyone we can get. We don't just know want a cow. Doing. Yeah. So we got our first like trailer load, if I'm remembering correctly. It was just like, I don't even know, such a hodgepodge. They were all different colors and we call them the cattle of many nations. <laughs> like, that's cool. And I'm pretty sure the Belty, who we call Oreo, just like every other farmer on the planet. Um, <laughs> we have kept her the whole time. She's the best mom. She, she looks good. She throws like the most amazing little calves. So we've kept her. Um, Blondie, the Scottish Highland, uh -huh. she was our mentors, Steve's. And um, Can we walk closer to yeah, her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We kept her, but she's retired. She's like 19 now. Oh my no gosh. No calves. We just 
pet her. And we actually have had so much more wildlife now that um, we've regenerated the soil. Like we have bluebirds that have oh, wow. joined our ecosystem and a lot of other things. So if you're okay stepping over yep. that one, that one's really hard for me to open and close. Let's see, this looks good. Hi, Blondie. So, so she's 19? Yeah. Wow. She does great. You said she's not, she's just kind of here because she's awesome. Yeah, these are all the mothers and then any of the little heifers. that. So this is more you're breeding her. Yeah. And then do you, are you trying to have a closed herd? Um, for these girls, yeah. We the But all the Herefords are new. They're okay. relatively new. Okay, so you're still building your herd. You're yeah, still we're building. building it. Okay. Yeah. So we, we do. We're we're, we're kind of trying to learn about breeding and genetics. Sure. And we love the Herefords because they're so gentle. Uh huh. But they have really great meat. Yes. And then my cousins, I think it's either third or fourth generation Angus farmers in upstate New York. We purchased finishing steer from them, but we're considering a bull or something. So okay, that's what I was going to ask you next: is how you breed them. Are you AIing or are you? Do you have a bull? We we have. We've used a bull so far. You, like you AI'd. rented a you rented a bull. Yeah. Well, or or borrowed one from okay. like my cousin gotcha. and stuff. Gotcha. Um, okay. For a friend. And yeah. And these Hereford cows came bred, so we're kind of it's kind of an experiment, but <laughs> <laughs> they've been really great so far. That's awesome. Um, and then yeah, we want to create our own line soon, and that's what we're working towards. Yeah. But we don't want to bite off more than we can chew, so right. This is where we are for now. That's awesome. So, like with your background. It was always in youth, but it wasn't in agriculture. So how does it feel for you being around such big animals? Are you from like the urban city? I live, areas? I grew up in Derry, this, which is next to Wyndham. All of my family, extended family, like cousins and everybody farmed, like some really big farms, like, uh -huh. like okay. up in New York. And um, so I was like in the summer times exposed to it and I loved it and I loved horses okay. and everything. So it felt very natural to me. Um, and I love it. Yeah, we all have our place. Yeah, <laughs> and I, that's awesome. I, I fit in there. I'm not always the one wrangling the cows, although I have been known to do that when needed. <laughs> but we, yeah, it it's so great. I do. I love the cows. I love thinking about genetics and introducing students to working the large animals yeah. and building confidence and learning how to move them and and read them and how our body language can move them and. That's such a good point, especially for youth, that if you walk up to a cow in a bad mood, they're going to have a bad mood. Yeah. And you have to be able to compartmentalize your attitude because there's a job that needs done. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I grew up on a farm, right? So I learned that very quickly. For people that aren't exposed to that, I, I think it's so important and for them to see that and to know how it feels to your attitude is affecting somebody else. Mm -hmm. awesome. Maybe we'll more intentionally incorporate that in our summer curriculum. Yeah. <laughs> we have all kinds of such great life applications like right. that. We talk about boundaries and oh, like, yeah. there's just like a million. It's really fun. One yeah. of our favorite activities is to, which is influenced probably by our mentor, Steve Normanton and Joel Salatin, who we love too. Uh -huh. But we'll have the kids, you know, we crawl in and we all just like lay down in the grass and the cows like slowly get curious and come up and the kids are just like wowed by it and they'll you know lick yeah. their toes and just practice being really calm and observing yeah just so many fun things that's yeah. why so i run all the the, pro, the camp programs and okay. stuff so i get okay. to that's awesome. creatively incorporate these things yeah. but but let's take a peek at the calf okay. just because everyone loves everybody them. loves to see a baby she calf. might run but that'd be cute too she doesn't have a name yet we how like, old is she she was born in April during this nor'easter that we had up oh here. Oh my. <laughs> I always say that calves are always she born is. in the worst time. Yeah. Look at her. Oh, She's, she looks good. Yeah, she, Look at her. She was born in the middle of the storm, so it was a little rocky. Yeah. I felt it was rocky. Yeah. Oh, I, it may not have been, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, it so before we leave the cows, mm -hmm. um, you said that you're incorporating rotational grazing and yes. I see that you've got your poly wire up yep. and it's a smaller area. Mm -hmm. So how are you moving them? Are you just moving them? Does it look like in rectangles back? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Okay. Are they moving every day? Yep. Sometimes cool. multiple times a day, but oh, really? usually it depends on what we're doing. Like everyone's different jobs today. So right. set it up for a big strip for just one day. So you said it's a hundred acres. Is it a hundred acres of pasture and woodland? Like what's that ratio look like? Yeah, I think it's about, I think we figured it out. It's closer to like 60 acres of pasture. And okay. And the rest are woods. And nice. So we'll do the pigs through the woods. Yeah. And we'll kind of open it up. What, that is why we needed the extra partnerships with 
other farmers. Yeah. Yeah. Which we didn't know, but then we were like, oh, we need this. It's been a wonderful, like, always learning. You yeah. Know, we're, Always I learning. assume it's a good experience, but yeah. how is it working with other farmers in the area? I mean, if you're already working on building the community together, are the farmers, obviously the ones you're working with are receptive, but yeah. have you gotten much pushback? No, I think around here, the only way to survive is by being really good friends with your That's a good other point. farmers. It's, yeah. The collaboration has only been really good, thankfully, for us and uh I mean, it always has its hiccups, but we've been really blessed and thankful. And uh, I think what's really fun is we, since we do a lot of sales online, we do, you know, our, our eggs we sell locally. So a lot of other farms that might not be doing eggs will buy our eggs and sell them, sell them from their farm oh, store nice. and then um, little shops around. So that's another facet of the community involvement. Speaking of, of that too, so I assume you, this is a nonprofit. Yes. Um, how do those, the, like when somebody's buying your meat, yep. where do those proceeds go? Does it just go to helping the volunteers? Because you do, a, you have a lot of volunteers. Yeah, all of the proceeds go to cover the expenses of the, the farm, the animals, the, all of the program, and then a small portion to cover fees for staffing and programs and then getting kids here who wouldn't be able to afford it. And then we have a huge donor base. Well, I guess I should <laughs> exaggerate. That's okay. An exaggeration. You but have you have a donor base. I have a donor base. Okay. Compared to what we started with, it's huge, and I love them all, and they're <laughs> amazing. Some of them are farmers themselves. That's awesome. And a lot of people that have seen the work with the children, or they've just they've been impacted by being able to be involved, and that is just so huge. And yeah, yeah, it's really like it. That's the piece that always makes me want to cry when. There's so much life change and so many, yeah. like when we started, we are like, this would be a cool program and maybe some kids from the city will, their lives will change. And it's like, Jeff will say the same thing. It's just like, it's become so much bigger than ourselves and anything we ever imagined. And wow. God's hand is on it. It's like, always like, I always say, it's like a kiss from heaven. It's like, yeah. you just do things in obedience and all these beautiful things happen. So, yeah. Yeah. So we've, we're walking to your laying hens. Yes. Here and hens. you, rotate them around. Yes, so we just have a few more things to finish up on the fields and then we'll be pulling them on. So this area is our winter pasture for the cows. We kind of clean it all up, make a new compost pile every spring and then the hens are in here for right now and then they'll, I mean they have all of this they can access. Gotcha. But then we pull them and we try to move them every couple of days. So they start systematically from this side and we keep them close to the woods during the hottest like July month and then they go all the way around okay. and so we just pull them with our tractor or our skid steer like every three or four days. Gotcha. And then we have um, a whole bunch more on the other side of the property um, so we're they're a younger flock so okay. we'll be we have two more white coops like this one here so they're just, just being, on an old hay wagon. Yeah, they're being okay. prepped. And once they're ready to go, those girls will be popped in and they'll be out here too. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So lots of spring cleanup still to do, but Yeah. Cuz you're you're based on youth. It's expanded to be all kinds of volunteers, adults, family, all that included. Yeah. But the kids, mm -hmm. so they help package the meat. Mm -hmm. Um they're going to run the storefront. Yes. Are they able to do much with the livestock? And if I already asked that, sorry. Oh no, but, it's okay. Um, yeah, are they, they able to do much with the livestock? Yeah, we have like cattle camp. And so oh, wow. for like three days in a row, they show up and they get to do the whole process of like setting up cattle lines, learning to rotate them, learning to watch the grass. And then we weigh the cows on the first day okay. and then they get, then we weigh them on the third day and they get to see and like, did, did they um, gain weight? and what do we need to do differently if they did or didn't? Mm, okay. um, and then, you know, we'll teach them whatever we can about working the cows and when they're in the squeeze chute, you know, how to ear tag and okay. just how to just, you know, what, what are you looking for in a healthy cow and yeah. um, observational farming and just different skill sets. So that's really fun. And then we have a just a really fun half day camp called Little Dreamers Camp okay. for ages just six and seven year olds. Because okay. um, we were doing so much for bigger kids, all the little siblings were like, we want camp, so uh -huh. we're, okay. So, and that's just fun. They love the chickens. What do you want? They're very friendly. We <laughs> raise them from Dale chicks. And uh -huh. They have no respect, so. <laughs> <laughs> they say humans. Yes. 
So the kids, yeah, they come out and it's like fun and games and just mm. very basics like education through storytelling yeah. and experiences and um, egg collection and just fun stuff. And then dreamers camp for ages eight to 12. Okay. And then any of the older kids that want to be involved, I help, they, they'll help lead. And so I think it's really great for even the 13 year olds to have responsibility at such a young age to be caring for the younger kids and yeah. the farm. And it seems to be going really great. So that's um, awesome. Yeah. And so the, the, most of them are in July and August programs. So, Very cool. and that's, yeah, they, the older the kids get, the more responsibility they have at camp and, yeah. and education kind of grows depending on their developmental age range or whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So these are our older girls. You know, we rotate flocks out, so yep. they're on nearing their rotation, but we kind of don't want to let them go this year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this that's those are the coops. They're lots of okay. fun, lots of stories about the coops. Yeah, let's take but a look. This will all be fixed up. They actually have a, a system that's traveling with them over there right now, but yeah. We'll clean all this up. We'll have their feeders that will travel with them. We've got a lot of Do stuff. they move by? A, do they move by a tractor or do you have to have like a skid steer like or a, a tractor? Okay, they okay. can move by truck, but very cool. Yeah, and then yeah, we hop in there and collect every day. But our other chicken coop is like a beautiful masterpiece. <laughs> okay, <laughs> these are like our the first generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're a little old. They're a little out. older. The, the older flock. Right. We we have to work pretty hard to keep them happy because they're how does that work with um running it as more of like a volunteer basis and being a nonprofit mm -hmm. where things are wearing out and you need to get new things how does that work how do you manage that yeah we usually pray <laughs> ask <laughs> for help and then see what happens and and it and, usually and comes we, yeah the needs are usually met i mean wow. sometimes you know stephanie is has taught me definitely how to like be resourceful so we are as resourceful as possible before just dropping any money yeah um which i think is an important res uh, skill for farmers to have and yeah. entrepreneurs <laughs> absolutely and then our donor base you know we can okay. say hey we have this need and oftentimes people will donate um we've had this a high school come out uh annually like in the spring they often will choose a project to kind of really uh, work on and they rehabilitated one of our other rolling coops which was so great and That's painted awesome. it fixed it all up so I mean sometimes there's just a need and it's just a need and it kind of hangs out for a while but usually if it's like we can all you know the business is to a point where we can take care of the core things we're not ever like oh that's awesome <laughs> these animals are sick and we can't take care of them right that, that doesn't for sure happen. for sure <laughs> it's more that's like awesome. oh we'd really like to upgrade this coop or building but we might need to wait a little bit or find someone who has time to help us we have this amazing volunteer right now who is doing the majority of the work to build um, the farm stand and donated all of the labor all of the goods for it and is working wow. with the kids and just um, such a huge blessing but that just happens sometimes yeah. and it's really cool so do you, how do your animals get processed do you have a processor that you take them to mm -hmm. okay okay yeah we use we actually have three that we really love in the area and wow, so we use awesome. them for different things like we do pigs at one cows at another if it's like a one-off cow we have one that's pretty local that can squeeze us in usually but okay. when we have our like business plan like six head we take them up to a, a place in Vermont and yeah so. gotcha so there's a lot going on here you, you kind of grew up with farming in a way mm -hmm. so it's not like it's completely brand new to you mm -hmm. but what is your perception on running a farm, making it work, like all of the hardships that go along to it, along with it. At the same time, it's a nonprofit. You're worried about money, but you're also not worried about money, right? Like you're not trying to make it make money, but you can't just bleed money. So how, how yeah. does that how does that work from like a farm manager's perspective? Well, <laughs> we have created an experiential entrepreneurship program for the kids because we want them to see learn how to see resources and make um, profitable positive impact and mm. give them like that skill set so that being in the mix we're always working hard to keep our business like really strong the the business it is you know every nonprofit has the business side so of course so the business side strong and running hard and so we just evaluate that part like a business yeah. as it is you know and and don't do things when we can and do things when we can and bringing the students in like they learn how to make business plans they learn how to like mm. create a budget they learn how to make decisions based on like okay well what's important 
um, what's urgent, yeah. you know, they learn how to really observe in their farming, which can help to um, avoid problems in the future. So, yeah. yeah, so having, you know, as Steph and I have grown over the past seven years, we've grown in our business skills, we've grown in our farming, we've grown in organizational leadership, and so all those things really work in conjunction. Our, our mission is to work with students and uh, help them understand who they are and to positively impact their communities and we're specifically doing it through entrepreneurship and farming together so all with that faith-based uh, or faith-based yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so yeah it's 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 about the kids and we're using farming as a tool just to introduce them to the faith and to the Lord and so when you kind of simplify it like that it, it makes sense but then yeah. you know because there's been this cool community aspect it's like oh wow so yeah we do our best to keep the business awesome we have a board and yeah. um we're we're always involving people that know business better than us both on yeah. like just the business side and then also just like agriculture and farming and they inform our decisions too and sometimes you have to make hard decisions like okay well we can't make that purchase or we can't increase this thing because it's just not going to work right. or we wanted to focus on growing the herd right now but the most profitable thing is going to be really focusing on the hens for a little bit longer because they're going to help generate more income and but that's reality and yeah right. so right. does that answer the question yeah it's a no. great question I'm kind of I was kind of like oh yeah I don't know <laughs> how do we do that I know we yeah. do that <laughs> yeah no I, I love that and I think adding into the aspect that you're teaching youth the entrepreneurship side of it mm -hmm. but to sit down and make a business plan enact the business plan mm -hmm. make on the spot decisions so that the business plan can be successful mm -hmm. and then reap the benefits of the profits mm -hmm. I, I mean it just it's full circle and i i love that i absolutely <laughs> love that and then in the fact that you're not doing this as a school right this is through camps yeah yeah. So we, you have to teach always, a lot of stuff <laughs> in a short amount of time yeah. and the kids are so receptive to it that they're coming back and volunteering mm -hmm. and being employed here. Like, that is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, Emily, thank you yeah, so thank much you for so having much. me out and showing me your amazing farm. It's, I, I, what I love about the farm tours that we're doing is that everybody, not everybody, but a lot of the people that we are touring, they're regenerative farming, mm -hmm. right, in some capacity. But you guys took it a step further, <laughs> and you're not just helping your community, but you're really empowering your youth. And I think that sharing your story and the more that you get out there, I, I think more people are going to keep doing this. Cool. I, yeah. I, I really That'd do. Be so, yeah. Well, and we'd love to give them any thoughts or insight or sure. encouragement or support if they do. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Emily, again. I appreciate it. We'll put any of your links that you have in the description below so that people can, can look at those. Cool. Thank awesome. You. Thanks. So I was a 10 year 4 -er. I did FA, FFA as a kid. And whenever I hear of somebody doing something with farming and the youth, I'm like, Ooh, ears are up. What, what's going on there? This is so cool what they have going on here. I haven't heard anything like this before. I hope that it continues to be popular. It's so important for kids to not only just be outside, but learn about the, the deep aspects of farming. Like she said, being able to read animals, like we talked about, pulling your emotions away so that you don't you know, disrupt the animals that you're trying to, to work with. The responsibilities of collecting eggs, packaging them, selling them to customers, it's all so important, and I'm so glad that they're doing that here. We are in the middle of our Connecticut tour. We have a few more to go before we're headed to New York next. We've got tons of farms lined up. We are so excited, and we hope that you come and join us along too. Thanks.